Rockers, CBBC Top 10. Oh, Top 10. Mm, yes. You all right, me old cockers? It's me, Hacker of the Deli. I'm counting down my top 10 shows on CBBC. So why don't you join me inside my little kennel? But take your shoes off first, cockers. <laughs> Number 10 on my list is help my supply teacher is magic. Personally, I've never had a magic supply teacher. And if I did, I don't think my initial reaction would be help. I'd probably just say, oh, isn't that weird, me old cockers? So the name of the show would then be, oh, isn't that weird, me old cockers? My supply teacher is magic. <laughs> This program has spawned lots of spin-offs, including Help My Supply Teacher Is Still Magic, Help My School Trip Is Magic, and Help My School Trip Is Still A Supply Teacher. Oh, and Help My TV Show Is Running Out Of Ideas For Titles. <laughs> the best thing about Help, though, is the presenter. He's handsome. He's funny. He's a mesmerizing screen presence. What's his name again? Oh, yeah, Ian Sterling, yeah. Ian and I spent many happy years together in the CBBC office. He was such a lovely man. But a terrible woman. Oh, do you remember his hair? Yes, his lank, long, complicated, filthy hair. And as for his clothes, I mean, why would anybody wear mustard coloured trousers? I've seen a better dressed salad cocker. Frankly, the man's a mess. A stinking, bearded, vol eyed mess. I'm glad he, I'm his daddy went, if I'm honest. Oh, yes. But he's a lovely person and a wonderful, well dressed presenter. And I miss him. And that's why, in my top 10 list of CBBC shows, help my supply teacher is magic. Is number 10. <laughs> At number 9, it's Deadly 60. I love this show because it stars Steve Bakshel on his washboard stomach. I once tried to do my laundry on Steve's stomach, but he got the police involved, so I stopped, yes. I love Deadly 60, but I don't know why it's called Deadly 60. I thought maybe it was called Deadly 60 because Steve Bakshel is both deadly and 60. So I tried to find out if that's why it's called Deadly 60. So I crept into Steve's house at night to have a look at his birth certificate. And it turns out he isn't 60 at all. He's 61. But he did turn deadly when he caught me in his study. And that's why he got the police involved for a second time. Oh, The other great thing about Deadly 60 is the animals. They've had them all, cocker! <laughs> Except for stoats. They've never had a stoat on. And that, to me, is a huge oversight. So I decided to put the idea into Steve's head by releasing a colony of angry stoats into his garden. Luckily, he didn't get the police involved that time. Although, it was only two hours ago. And that's why in my top ten list of CBBC shows, Deadly 60 is number nine. Oh, that's probably Back Steve now. I want a word with you. Don't oh, nick us! It's the police! He's not here, governor! He's got the love, love! At number eight, it's Tracy Beaker Returns. I love this show because it's all about my favourite character from literature, Gina from the Dumping Ground. <laughs> it's a little known fact that the programme also contains a character called Tracy Beaker. Yeah, it's true that, yeah. Honest, it's true, yeah. <laughs> Danny Armour's been playing the role of Tracy since the 11th century. Back then it was called The Old Story of Tracy Beaker and it followed her adventures during the Norman Conquest. That was a mere 1,000 years ago. But it's so popular, CBBC have been showing it every hour of every day ever since. In fact, I don't know why they bother calling this series Tracy Beaker Returns. I mean, how could she return? She's never been off the telly, cocker. I'm sick of the girl. Frankly, all she ever does is say bog off to everyone. I mean, how disgusting is that? Relying on toilet humour for a cheap laugh. It makes me so angry I could just... Oh, that's better. Now, as I was saying, relying on toilet humour makes me so angry I could just... Yes, that's right. Toilet humour. It makes me so angry I could just... Oh, I've got none left. There's only one thing for it. <gasps> oh, I love toilet humour! And that's why in my top ten list of CBBC shows, Tracy Beaker Returns is number eight! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, smells of sadness. At number seven, it's Diddy Movies with Dick and Dan. This is a great series because they've made every type of film you can think of. Westerns, sci-fi, superheroes, you name it, they've done it, cocker. But there's one film they haven't made yet. A film about me. And that's why I'm going to sell them the rights to my life story. Excuse me a second, I get the phone. I'll just get on speed down, you brilliant. Hello, is that Dick and Dom? It is, it's Dick and Dom. All right, Cocker, it's me, Hacker, yeah. Hacker the dog, yeah, I'm telling you. You know me, you've met me before, yeah. Moving eyebrows, that's me. Yeah, Hacker, that's right, yeah. 
Anyway, I'd like you to make a film about my life story, if you would. Yes, it is interesting. Yeah, you should hear some of my stories. Here's one for you. Listen to this one. The other day, I went to the butchers, and guess what? It was closed! So I had to go to a different butcher's. Classic story. All right, all right, you didn't like it. All right, you'll love this one then. Listen to this. One morning, I was walking down the street and there was a massive puddle. And I didn't see the puddle. And people were shouting, hey, mind that puddle. And I said, what are you on about? I can't see a puddle. And they said, hey, that's right in front of you. So I then avoided the puddle and didn't get wet. Hello? Hello? They must be considering their options. What a lovely pair of women they are. And that's why in my top ten list of CBBC shows, Diddy Movies is number seven. <laughs> oh, look, a puddle! At number six is Sam and Mark's big wind-up. Now, some people call them the poor man's ant and deck, but I think that's unfair. <laughs> They're actually the poor man's chuckle brothers. <laughs> Sam and Mark once had me on their show, and I was expecting the special guest star treatment. And did I get it? Did I budgies? First of all, the limo of this end was only 20 feet long, and the swimming pool on the roof wasn't even heated. I was furious. I mean, I still had this quick swim. It was even worse when I got to the studio, you know. I told everyone that they weren't allowed to look me in the eye. Oh, yes! But then I got there, and someone did look me in the eye. I said, hey, are you looking me in the eye? And he said, no, I'm not looking you in the eye. And I said, you are, you looking me in the eye. And he said, I'm not looking you in the eye. I said, look me in the eye when you say that. So he looked me in the eye and said that. So I had him fired on the spot. And then I realised I'd been looking in a mirror the whole time. Anyway, after I'd given myself my job back, I had a little look in my dressing room and I thought, Oh, look at the state of this, it's a right mess. So I marched up to Sam and Mark and said, I'm not an animal! And they said, you are an animal. And I said, I am an animal! So I fired myself again and went home. And that's why in my top ten list of CBBC shows, Sam and Mark's big wind-up is number six. Especially the one with me in it.